Welcome to Anglican Origins, the podcast that explores the history of the Anglo-Saxon people, from their origins to the Norman Conquest. In each episode, we'll dive deep into the lives of the key figures of this fascinating period, from kings and queens to warriors and poets. Through storytelling and analysis, we'll explore the events that shaped this pivotal era in English history, and how they still resonate today. Hello and welcome to Anglican Origins, episode number five. Let's talk about Anglo-Saxon paganism. It's a fascinating topic that goes back over a thousand years to a time when the pagan gods of the Germanic tribes were still being worshipped in what is now England. To start off with, let's talk about the history of Anglo-Saxon paganism. The religion was practiced by the Anglo-Saxon people, who migrated to England from Northern Europe in the 5th and 6th century, and brought with them their beliefs in a pantheon of gods and goddesses. Our knowledge of Anglo-Saxon paganism comes primarily from three sources. Archaeology, written records from the Christian era, and comparative studies of other Germanic pagan religions. Archaeological evidence has revealed a great deal about the material culture of the Anglo-Saxon pagans including their religious practices and beliefs. For example, the discovery of pagan burial sites has provided insights into burial practices and beliefs about the afterlife. Archaeological finds such as weapons, jewellery and religious artefacts have also shed light on the gods and goddesses worshipped by the Anglo-Saxons and the rituals and ceremonies associated with their worship. One interesting aspect of Anglo-Saxon paganism is that it was primarily an oral tradition, with little written down about it. The written records that we do have from the Christian era of the 9th and 10th century, while often biased and incomplete, provide valuable insights into Anglo-Saxon paganism. Many of those records were written by Christian monks, who often portrayed the pagan past in a negative light and sort of emphasised the superiority of Christianity. However, despite their biases, these records provide valuable information about the gods and goddesses worshipped by the Anglo-Saxons. Comparative studies of other Germanic pagan religions, such as Norse paganism and the pagan religions of continental Europe, have also been used to reconstruct the beliefs and practices of the Anglo-Saxon pagans. While there were certainly regional variations in pagan beliefs and practices across the Germanic world, there were also many similarities and the comparative studies have helped fill in some of the gaps in our knowledge about Anglo-Saxon paganism. Now let's talk about some of the beliefs and practices of Anglo-Saxon paganism. One important aspect of this religion was the concept of weird. Weird was central to the religious and philosophical worldview of the Anglo-Saxon pagans. It referred to the idea that each individual's fate was predetermined by the gods at the time of their birth and that this fate was inescapable and unavoidable. The concept of weird had several important implications for Anglo-Saxon pagan belief and practice. First and foremost, it meant that each individual had a predetermined role to play in the world and that their actions were ultimately shaped by their fate. This idea provides a sense of order and purpose to the world, as well as explaining the events that took place within it. At the same time, the concept of weird also meant that the individuals had a certain degree of agency within the confines of their fate. While they could not escape their ultimate destiny, they could still make choices and take actions that would shape the course of their lives and the lives of those around them. This belief in the importance of individual agency was an important aspect of Anglo-Saxon pagan belief and was reflected in many of their religious practices, such as the practice of making offerings and sacrifices to the gods in exchange for their favour. The Anglo-Saxon pagan pantheon was a complex and diverse collection of gods and goddesses that reflected the religious beliefs and practices of the Anglo-Saxon people. While there were regional variations in the gods and goddesses worshipped across different parts of Anglo-Saxon England, there were also many similarities, and certain deities were worshipped throughout the region. One of the most important gods in the Anglo-Saxon pantheon was Woden, also known as Odin in the Norse mythology, who is the chief god of war, wisdom, and magic. He is often depicted as a one-eyed, long-bearded man wearing a wide-brimmed hat and a cloak. He is also associated with the concept of weird, and was believed to be able to shape the destiny of individuals and nations. 
Another important god in the pantheon was Thuno, also known as Thor. He was the god of thunder, lightning and storms. He was depicted as a muscular man carrying a hammer and was often invoked for protection against storms and other natural disasters. Other important gods and goddesses in the Anglo-Saxon pantheon included Tiu, also known as Tyr. He was the god of war and justice. Ostra, who was the goddess of spring and fertility, and Freya, who was the goddess of love, fertility, and war. One of the most important practices of Anglo-Saxon paganism was the offering of sacrifices to the gods. These sacrifices could take many forms, from animals to valuable objects such as weapons or jewellery. Sacrifices were often made in important times of the year, such as at the solstices and the equinoxes, or before important events such as battles. It's also worth noting that Anglo-Saxon paganism was a highly hierarchical religion. With priests and priestesses, who were responsible for conducting religious rituals and interpreting the will of the gods. The priest and priestess were often highly educated and well-respected members of society, and their duties could range from overseeing the construction of new temples and shrines, to conducting funerals and other important ceremonies. Despite the decline of paganism and the rise of Christianity, the role of the priest and priestess continued to hold an important place in the hearts and minds of many Anglo-Saxons. Of course, it's important to remember that Anglo-Saxon paganism was not a monolithic religion, and that different communities and regions would have their own unique beliefs and practices. Nonetheless, the general principles and practices of this religion give us a window into the beliefs and the values of the Anglo-Saxon people. One interesting aspect of Anglo-Saxon paganism is how it interacted with Christianity, which was gradually introduced to England from the 6th century onwards. If you'd like to know more about how Christianity was introduced to England, feel free to go back and check out episode 2 where we covered that in detail. As Christianity gained more influence, many of the practices of Anglo-Saxon paganism began to decline. However, elements of the old religion continued to survive, and there were even some attempts to synchronise Christianity with elements of the pagan tradition. For example, the holiday of Halloween, which is celebrated in many English-speaking countries, has roots in the old pagan festival of Samhain, which marked the end of the harvest season and the beginning of winter. In Anglo-Saxon paganism, the concept of the afterlife was an important part of religious belief. The Anglo-Saxons believed that after death, the soul would travel to other realms inhabited by various supernatural beings, including gods and goddesses, as well as various spirits and monsters. One of the most important figures in the Anglo-Saxon afterlife was the goddess Hel, who ruled over the dead. According to legend, she lived in the dark realm known as Helheim, where she received the souls of the departed. This realm was located beneath the roots of the world tree Yggdrasil, which was said to connect the various realms of the cosmos. The afterlife was also closely tied to the concept of honour and reputation in Anglo-Saxon society. The idea was that one's reputation in life would continue to have an impact on one's fate in the afterlife. Those who lived honourable lives and had earned the respect of the community would be rewarded with a place in the halls of the gods, where they would enjoy eternal feasting and celebration. On the other hand, those that lived dishonourably or had failed to earn the respect of their peers would be condemned to a less desirable fate. These souls might be consigned to the underworld, where they would be forced to endure an endless torment and suffering. One of the most famous descriptions of the Anglo-Saxon afterlife comes from the epic poem Beowulf. In the poem, the hero Beowulf is described as having earned a place in the halls of the gods through his bravery and prowess in battle. His death is depicted as a glorious event, with his soul ascending to the heavens accompanied by cheers of his comrades. The concept of the afterlife in Anglo-Saxon paganism was a complex and multi-layered one, reflecting the values and beliefs of the society in which it was practiced. While the specifics of this belief system may largely be unknown to us today, it remains an important part of the cultural and spiritual heritage of the Anglo-Saxon world. Anglo-Saxon paganism may have largely been supplanted by Christianity over a thousand years ago, but its influence can still be seen in modern England, from the revival of pagan beliefs and practices to the ways in which the language and literature of Anglo-Saxon period continues to shape modern culture. The legacy of Anglo-Saxon paganism remains alive and well in England today. One of the most visible aspects of the modern revival of Anglo-Saxon paganism is the growth of neo-pagan groups, 
that draw inspiration from the gods and goddesses of the Anglo-Saxon pantheon. These groups often hold outdoor rituals and celebrations, and many incorporate elements of the traditional Anglo-Saxon practices, such as the making of offerings and sacrifices to the gods. In addition to these organized groups, there are also many individuals who incorporate elements of Anglo-Saxon paganism into their personal spiritual practices. Some draw on their surviving Anglo-Saxon texts and traditions to create their own individualized practices, while others seek out mentors and teachers who can guide them in the use of traditional practices and techniques. The legacy of Anglo-Saxon paganism can also be seen in the ongoing debates over national identity and the role of traditional values in modern society. For some, the revival of Anglo-Saxon paganism represents the rejection of the moral decay and social fragmentation of modern society, and a return to a more cohesive and communal value of the past. While the traditional beliefs of Anglo-Saxon paganism may have largely disappeared over a thousand years ago, their legacy continues to shape modern England in numerous ways. That's all for this episode. Thank you so much for listening and spending some of your time here with me. Please feel free to follow the podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and anywhere else you like to listen to your podcasts. Like it, share it, rate it, and all that good stuff. It would really mean a great deal to me. Join me next time as we delve further into the world of the Anglo-Saxons, as we continue to explore their remarkable society, culture, and everyday lives. Until then, take care, and stay curious. Bye-bye. Freya, who is the goddess of love, fertility, and also war. Lots of war. All of war. <laughs> everybody's, everybody's got a war, apparently. Oh, those Anglo-Saxons love their war.